There it is, the uh, post-game celebration there by the Oakland Raiders as they escape with the 24-21 victory in London against the beloved Chicago Bears. Welcome back to another episode of the Chris and DJ Show. I'm Chris Shanafel. He is former Chicago Bear himself, DJ Moore. And uh, the last time, before yesterday, the Bears played in London. DJ was a part of that uh, Chicago Bears team back in 2011. They got the victory against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. DJ, you actually had an interception to seal the deal in that game. Um, unfortunately, uh, the Bears did not have that same luck uh, yesterday. It was a uh, really rough game. I, I would probably say it was it was probably the worst uh, coached game by by. <laughs> Or the worst game, I guess, the Bears have played in over the past uh, year and five games that Matt Nagy has been the team's head coach. Um, they came out flat. They looked unprepared. They, they, they didn't look ready to play in this game. And uh, Oakland got off to a very hot start, a 17-0 lead um, at halftime. And then, of course, the Bears were able to kind of rally back Third quarter, they scored 21 unanswered points to take a 21-17 lead, and uh, unfortunately, the Oakland Raiders were able to drive in the fourth quarter uh, 97 yards down the field. Rookie Josh Jacobs was able to get in the end zone and score the game-winning uh, touchdown. Raiders get the victory 24-21. Uh, DJ, as I said, that was a rough game to watch, really from start to finish. The, the Bears looked flat on all three phases. Um, the defense had their asses handed to them. The offense looked uh, like the like what the Bears' offense has looked like uh, to start the uh, to start the season off this year. Whether that's Chase Daniel under center, whether that's Mitch Trubisky under center. Uh, yesterday it was kind of the same result. And uh, again, um, you know the Bears have gotten lucky to start the year off uh, uh, with a couple of these victories. Uh, looking back at that Denver game. Um, they were almost able to pull out yesterday's game to start the season four and one, but, uh, instead they drop it. And, uh, now they are three and two entering the bye week. And now we get to dwell on this loss, uh, for the next two weeks, DJ. Yeah. Um, I thought it was, you could see it coming. Um, you alluded, you alluded to it. The, the Broncos game was like, you keep playing with fire, man. You don't get burned. I mean, so in, in, the game, I mean, and even having the opportunity to win this game, I mean, I mean, the Raiders did everything right. Uh, now we had some things kind of fall our way, but I mean, the running back came in, the offensive line came in, running the ball at Khalil Mack, which normally you would do that just because 
if he's running away from him, I mean, he makes it a little chaotic on you. Know I mean, make him take on blocks and things like that. But seemed a little more excited, man. Um, Carl looked good. He didn't turn the ball over. But really, the tell of the tape was, you know, that rookie had 26 and 124. I think our rookie had like 11 for 25 or something. You know what I mean? So we haven't – I think his – no matter what type of style of offense you run, if you can't run the ball, then you'll struggle. No matter who the offense is, when Chip Kelly came in, um, the guy with the Rams that everybody loves and they struggling. Like when you when you cannot hand the ball off and get yards, you can't set up play action. You can't you can't control. You can't really dictate anything. And right now, we got to figure out a way to get. Have we? I don't think we haven't had a hundred yard rusher, have we? No, yeah, not not even close. Not even yeah, close. Yeah, not even close. I mean, these last couple, I don't think we we've, you know what I mean. I mean, we battle breaking fifty. You know what I mean. And it's not that they're not you know talented like runners. It's just I don't know. I, I don't know if it's the scheme of the play call or whatever it is, but some some has I think some has to change. And and if we can't get a running game going, some quick short game or some screen, some some's got to get. You know, there's been a lot of, and we've hammered down on it the last few weeks. Uh, this offensive line is uh, really, they've gotten off to an awful start this season. And you could look at a number of different guys. Um, but how about Kyle Long, man? I mean, just another rough game for Kyle Long. He got uh, took last week off, had that hip injury. Looks like that, that hip injury kind of carried over into this game. But, um, yeah, I mean, even even... <laughs> Just saying, trying to give the guy some type of excuse. I mean, it, it's been a rough start to the season. Then you got Charles Leno Jr. coming off of a, a big payday. The Bears paid him in the offseason. Um, leads the league in uh, in offsides penalties. Um, very disappointing there. You, you got to wonder, is that a coaching issue? Is that a Charles Leno Jr. issue? That's got to get figured out. And. Uh -huh. And then the center situation. I mean, when do they decide that, hey, you know what, we need to move Cody Whitehair back to center and move James Daniels, the uh, second-year player out of Iowa, former second-round pick, uh, back to guard where that offensive line unit uh, had a lot of success last season? Well, they got to figure something out. Um, and I didn't get to – I was out with the pain. I didn't get to really watch, watch the game. I'm going to go back and watch it again. So whenever we kind of break it down later on in the week. But long as – I mean, we talked about it, man. I told I'm looking at it. Could this like, be – okay, so Kyle, Kyle Long has suffered quite a few injuries throughout his career. Could this listen, just be his listen. body wearing down on him and maybe listen. he won't have a long, successful it, it career now? Be. But when you're out there and you're getting beat like that, because he does extra after the play. He'll get beat and then he'll do something and back you down or try to throw you over the top of the pile. No, it's your hip ain't hurting in. Like, I need you during yeah. the play not to get bullied because we're not controlling the line of scrimmage. Now I had I felt good about it because when he was out, it seemed like Chase Daniels had a little more time. You know what I mean? He had, I mean, it just kind of was like, yeah, we kind of control. He was probably, you could say, the most complete game we played. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Um, man, it, it it just it's just hard to watch. So whatever they mix the linemen up, they gotta do something. Now, in that offense, the most athletic people in football are defensive linemen. Bar none. You're going to play against some really good athletic defensive linemen and in the division and outside, every single game. But, man, come I mean, the Raiders just played against probably the best defense in the league and destroyed it. We're not talking about, like, any old defense. They were like, you know what, they're going to be better than the 85 Bear defense and then just right down the middle like, yum, yum, yum. Now – it happens to a good defense. It always does. You'll bounce back. You had a really good game. They talk about you like you're the greatest ever. You're going to run into somebody that's going to hit you in your mouth every now and again. Now, I expect them to respond. They did respond during the game. 17 points. You know what I mean? Don't give up any until, you know, for a while. But that's why you got to have a, a balance. Now, the special teams came on. Corn had, a, you know, a really good play to kind of help out. But that's why as a team, he talked about it. Uh, after the, I think the last game, it's a complete game. It's a complete team. Like you gotta, like you just can't. You just can't think that the defense is gonna hold everybody to under ten points. You just can't think that. And at the beginning, it just seems like, even when we get touchdowns, it's more so as gifts. So like somebody fumbles, or 
somebody recovers this or it's a punt return. Like, I think out of all the drives, I can remember just really one, like just drive, drive, where you just go down the field, you don't know, score without having to be in really, really good field position. Like, can you, like, consistently move the ball without your defense having to either score or get you in the field goal range when you already have the ball? And it doesn't – to me, it just doesn't – it seems – it doesn't seem that way. I, I don't know. I don't know if they just know what he's running or what. I mean, the the Raiders defense is okay. Now they got some big corners. They played a lot of they play a lot of man and different things like that. Um, Robinson is. I mean, he's been producing. You know, you, you got to just throw it up to him every play or something. I don't know, but some has to um, some has to give, or you end up like uh, your boy uh, oh the other group. He's probably gonna work with his brother now, so he'll be fine. Yeah, Jay Gruden canned out of uh, Washington this morning after the, the loss to the New England Patriots. Um, but, yeah, as you were saying, I mean, you, you can't rely on the defense to hold opponents under you know, 10, 13 points every single game. And, of course, the Raiders were able to uh, score 24 uh, points on this Bears defense yesterday, just enough to get the victory uh, by uh, three point, a couple of points. Uh, yeah, three points uh, yesterday against this Bears team, and Matt Nagy in the post-game press conference, uh, you know, he, he pointed out, he said, hey, defense and uh, special teams, they, they've played great this season. Yeah, it wasn't their day yesterday, but that's when you have to fall back, and that's when you you, you need to rely on your offense to produce something, to produce uh, some type of, uh, 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 pr- produce some type of, yardage, uh, big-time plays, and while the, the plays were there yesterday for the Bears, I mean, uh, Allen Robinson, legit number one wide receiver, playmaker, made made some unbelievable catches uh, yesterday. It was nice to see uh, uh, the, the former second-round pick, uh, Anthony uh, Miller, uh, uh, make some plays yesterday. He's kind of been uh, uh, missing all season long up until yesterday with the absence of Taylor Gabriel. Um, Javon Wims went down with an injury at some point in yesterday's game a little bit later though but it was nice to see Anthony Miller kind of pick things up the the tight end position still not seeing very much out of that but uh, you know it it was this offense made plays just a little too late I mean again when when you're starting to uh, produce uh, in the second half and you know the the first half was just a total wash um, you're not really setting your team up uh, for success, and uh, you know, it, it was a, a tough start to the game. It got a little better over time, but ultimately, it did not uh, finish in the Bears' favor as they lost this one 24 21. A lot of people, DJ, are pointing to the fact that the Bears didn't arrive in London until Friday. Um, they left uh, well, Thursday, they didn't arrive until Friday, a- and the Oakland Raiders. We're there all week. They practice all week long there. Um, And John Gruden said, because John Gruden took that approach last year where they were only in London for a few days, wanted to make it a quick trip. And John Gruden said that he wanted to give his uh, team, you know, he he said that he didn't know how his players performed on the field last week because uh, by the time the the game rolled around, he was physically and mentally just exhausted. And uh, they ended up uh, losing that game last year. This year they switched some things around, ended up pulling out the victory um, now that you could look at it either way. I mean, I, I don't think that's much of an excuse, especially when the bears are able to kind of pull back and get themselves back in the game. Um, but yeah, I mean, do you remember, I know we kind of talked a little bit about it last week. I mean, what was the approach that the bears took when you were, uh, when well, you made the trip back in 2011? Yeah, so I guess the conversation would be different because we left late and they was down there the whole week. So it was pretty much, you know, people took families and, you know, it was more so like a family vacation for them. You know, Lovey approached it as more of a, you know, it's a business trip. I think we went down, I think maybe like the Thursday, Friday thing. Um, but I think when you do get down there a little bit later, especially for more of your star players, they have to do a lot. They'll go and probably visit a soccer team, kick a soccer ball and play some cricket. Uh, coaches may have to do something. So I think you still have to make your – I guess your your NFL, you know, appearance rounds or whatever. So I think that could be exhausting. But, man, if you get me down there early, I'm just go to a strip club or something. <laughs> or, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just going to have a good time either way. I think once the game comes. Now, if he went down there last year and he felt like that approach was wrong and he went, went this way with it, hey, it worked out for him. You know what I mean? 
my thing with Nagy is it's just every – it sounds really good. I love when he got sound bites, he got energy. Offense wasn't good enough. We, we've said that every single game. So to me, it's like if I say my offense isn't good enough – in every game I'm saying that either they're just not, I don't have the players, or something has to be not right. Because you know after the one game, first game, you had some extra time to pay back for the next one. You know you're going to watch film. You know you're going to hone in on it. You know you're going to try to put something together. Doesn't work. Good job, defense. Doesn't work again. Good job, defense. Doesn't work again. Defense had a tough one. We still ain't got no offense. You know what I mean? So I I don't know. You know what I mean? I, it just it just to to at some point you have to like turn it around. I get the you know, I get the raw raw stuff. It, it sounds cool. Club triple dub and ha 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 one two everything. <laughs> but the, none of that matters, man. Like you don't get epic post game speeches because you. Cause you barely, uh, you always barely lose games. You know what I mean? Cause you just on offense, even at the end, just find a way, put points on the board. You know what I mean? Just something. Cause, but eventually you're gonna have with a defense like this, you're gonna have to, you have to do something. Cause it's division, ain't nobody going away. And listen, everybody at this point right now, everybody is good. You got Detroit, you got Minnesota, who you didn't beat, then you got Greenville, who you lost to. You play Minnesota again, they'll be fired up because you beat them the first time. Green Bay is always fired up. Detroit is always ready to play. So it's going to be – I mean, it's going to be hell, man. I mean, it's not as easy a schedule as it was, you know what I mean, last year. And games like losing to the Raiders, I mean, it's almost like you can't afford it, you know what I mean? Yeah, so. yeah, I mean – hey, we've seen where 10-6 and six doesn't get you in the playoffs and uh, this yeah. NFC North yeah. – this NFC North uh, division is looking really tough. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it would have set up really nicely if they were to, to go into the bye 4-1. Instead, they're going into the bye 3-2 and two after this loss. And looking into the uh, what the offense was able to do, DJ, Chase Daniel, 22 of 30, 230 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions. Um, the, the last inter- – well, both interceptions. The first one was to a linebacker right in the middle of the field. Um, that I, I think that was more so of Chase Daniel. That that's where the whole um, you know height weight kind of thing gets gets uh, looked at at the quarterback position. Chase Daniel only six feet. Uh, did look like he was able to look over his offensive lineman. Totally missed the linebacker right there in the middle of the field and threw it right to him. Nicholas Morrow, the linebacker that was in the first half and then uh, later in the game towards the very end, um, some type of miscommunication. Nagy said with uh with Anthony Miller who Chase Daniel targeted in the end of the game and um just an ugly pass though by Chase Daniel a 10-year veteran um that, that I don't think a 10-year vet should make and uh threw it right into triple coverage where Gary on Conley the former Raiders first round pick was able to come down with the interception and pretty much seal the deal for the Raiders um again uh, it, this was a game where you you look at Chase Daniel and you see why he's been a, a backup quarterback his entire career. Last week he he looked great. He looked great. Credit to him. You know, very familiar, more familiar of this offense than Mitchell Trubisky is. And you've seen a lot of things. You've seen this offense uh, kind of you know move like a, a, a well-oiled machine that that you expected it to last week, at least in the first half against Minnesota. Um, this week didn't really see any of that even the big plays that were made by Anthony Miller and Allen Robinson it was like uh they almost came out of nowhere you, th- this offense had no rhythm in this game and uh you know it it really affected the offense and it really affected this that's, team that's at the, the end thing. you say rhythm there's it seems to be no rhyme or reason for anything um I went to a um, high school game this week my wife had a, like anniversary and and you can see them like calling plays, but it just didn't seem to match up with the situation, the personnel didn't match up. Like, I don't know, like, even with Tariq Cole, like, I don't know what, like, who, what is he, though? You know what I mean? Is he a receiver? Is he a running back? Like, what are you actually trying to accomplish? 
Um, you got Patterson, who always going to get him one or two rushes a game. Like, what is it? What is he supposed? What are you trying to do? Are you just? It's because you, you. It's not special situation. You just putting him in to just run the ball every now and again. Like I said, if they're setting up for some way down the road, more power to them. Okay, but nothing just seems right. You have the young running back Montgomery. Um, in his credit, he can do everything that Cohen can do. But you don't, you don't kind of showcase that. You know what I mean? Like, if you put Cohen in or Montgomery, you can motion him out the backfield, let him have mismatches. Or, but it just to me, it seems it's no rhyme or reason. And then when you put certain people in or both running backs in, it's like a hundred percent pass. Then when Cohen's in, it's either screen or it's pass. Um, when he's a receiver, he's always a receiver. He's not there to block. You know what I mean? So everything you do, you put Patterson in the backfield. What do I do? <laughs> I mean, I know like, it just seems so predictable. And even with Allen Robinson, a lot of his plays have come off like he's just going up and get the ball. You play a man, just go and get the ball. That's really not – that's not even – I mean, that's not a play call. Even like um, Miller when he went and got it. Like it wasn't a great throw. Probably should have been a pick. He just – I mean, he's just bailing you out on that. On, you know what I mean? To, on, on that point. So just because when you – when you put it in context of this offense is the same as Kansas City offense, even though Kansas City offense struggled still this week too, okay? But it's still their concept. Guys are always open for some reason. I don't know why they're always open. And our guys always seem to like have to battle for the ball or have to go and get it. Like, like I want you smart enough to think of something that says, like, how can I get some guys open? How can I roll them off? screens or do this like if you watch like a new england it's like it doesn't matter who they have out there the concept is so airtight that it's always somebody just like my formation my play call is creating the space and it's not just me having to get off you know a press man coverage with somebody who can run and jump and do everything that i can do so i i don't know what the rhyme or reason is if because it just ain't been no flow to it. This isn't like, okay. Now, at the beginning of the year, it was more so we would get like a holding call or something, which, I mean, they would throw it off. But even when there's no penalty, it doesn't seem, it just doesn't seem just like, it's just, it's like not a puzzle. It's just not sticking together, man. You know what I mean? If you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, um, absolutely. And, you know, looking a little deeper into this run game yesterday, David Montgomery, 11 carries. Uh, 39 yards, no, 29 yards, excuse me. A touchdown, he did have the touchdown. Um, Tariq Cohen, four carries, 10 yards. He added six receptions for uh, 39 yards. Uh, Cordell Patterson, one rush for five yards. Mike Davis, zero. Zero rushes. He's kind of... D, no M. You know what I mean? It's just, when I told you somebody would have to take the back seat, he's a really good running back. He can catch out of the backfield. I, I, I don't know how to – I mean, that's what – and we talked about, like, is it not too many weapons or it may be too many for him to try to choose from. I know it's it's fascinating to have Patterson because even when he run the ball, he looked pretty good. If you want to just let him play running back, I'm fine with that. Just let him be the running back. Let him come out of the backfield. He, he is the team's leading rusher, 71 yards yeah. on the season. <laughs> Yeah, so let I mean you can let him be it. Like it like the person Harvin type, like where it's like legit. You gotta you just gotta adjust to it. That was my whole thing with Cohen. Or even with Montgomery is you can motion him out the backfield in different ways. We've seen like again, I don't like I don't I'm not even a fan of the Patriots, but they just do it so well. They move them out the backfield, your linebackers have to guard them. When I watch the Minnesota game and I watch uh was it is it Anthony Barr? Yes. Gordon Cohen, he looked terrified. He was, I mean, he just couldn't go. They had to, and they had to bring the safety down to double team him. If you don't realize this, like he just can't keep up with him. Like, no, there's not a linebacker in this world, man, that's going to keep up with these cats. That's why you leave them in the backfield and then you can motion them out. Cohen, four carries. If he get 11, will he break one? Who knows, but you got to give him a chance. You know what I mean? Give him a chance to do that. I remember after the first game, we were talking about, oh, Montgomery got to get carries. 
So he made it a point. Montgomery got to get carries. So every game now, Montgomery's getting carries. If he's not getting yards, we're going to figure something out. Now, it could be the line, too. But something, put Mike Davis in, somebody go, man, go to the hot hand at this point. He a rookie. You're going to have him for three, four years anyway. Like, get, hey, let somebody else see if they can bust one through. I don't know. But we, this run game, it, it just has to be, it just has to be, I mean, he has to be figured out. Meanwhile, uh, meanwhile, Jordan Howard, five touchdowns in Philadelphia, three last week alone. Um, but it, it doesn't doesn't matter who, who it is back there if, if you're not going to call the running plays. So, um, yeah, definitely got to see, uh, uh, well, it, really an offense overhaul. I mean, th- there needs to be some changes, whether it's to the offensive line, uh, whether it's the coaching staff having to look look themselves in the mirror and uh, correct some of their mistakes, um, we'll see. They they the Bears do uh, after the bye. They'll be playing the New Orleans Saints. It'll be interesting to see if um, they'll be taking on Drew Brees or uh, Teddy Bridgewater, who you know really has not has not uh, uh, skipped a beat uh, with that New Orleans uh, offense. Oh, they're, they're, their defense is really good. Mm-hmm. Um, they got and they they like they got somebody on each and every single level, and they're and and they'll play man. I mean that's gonna be a tough. Where's that game at? I believe it's here in Chicago. I got the oh, schedule right here. Oh, okay, because that's a that's a tall. Yeah. It'll be it'll tall. be at home. So that's that's better, but still that's that's a um. Now you are coming off a bye. Really good coaches, all right. All the really good coaches off the bye after a loss, it has to be a guaranteed victory. Has to be. But that's that's gonna be a tall, that's gonna be a tough task. Um yeah, that's gonna be a tough. But even with now, if it's Breeze, I think it's it's a little bit tough. Now, even though Teddy Breeze, well, I think the what it was the um cowboy, they been what. 12, 10. I mean, I thought we can hold them, but still, with, with Breeze, though, I mean, they got, I mean, they got some weapons, too, now. Um, that, that could be, that could be interesting, man. Um, but are we struggling with that one? Oh, you talking about Bulls? Oh, yeah. Ooh, we. Yeah, it, will, a, it wouldn't be game? pretty. That's Is a that three, three, that, it's a 325 game. Oh, okay. Well, it, okay. Okay. If we probably would have won this one, it would have got bumped or something. But okay, yeah. Yeah, you're probably right about that. Yeah, that, that, that's going to be that's going to be interesting. But with all this, I mean, the offense. I think they'll still over time. We'll still slow down because once it gets colder, it, I mean, everything slows down offensively. But I think our defense is good enough to where all you got to do is as a coach and as a, an offense, like just like it's a Broncos, you just have to put together a drive. Same way in the playoffs, put together a drive. Now you missed a field goal, but that's what it's gonna boil down to. Like it did at the right moment, can you just can you make a play? Um and as of right now, you know, I mean, we we struggling to make them play. We had we did like it with the Broncos, but you just you just struggle to see what, you know what I mean, where it will come from at times. Again, the Bears fall to the Oakland Raiders in London 24-21. Um, looking at the defensive side of the football, DJ, again, it was equally as ugly as the offensive side. Um, although in the second half, this defense did make some plays, a beautiful play by Sherrick McManus, the longest tenured bear, um, on, on the current team. He, uh, hit him with the peanut punch, Trevor Davis, that is who they acquired from the Green Bay Packers a couple of weeks ago. Um, knocked the ball out of his hands right at the goal line, right before he was able to cross the, uh, the pylon and uh, uh, Sherrick McManus able to punch it out. Prince of Mukamara was able to recover it. Um, classic textbook uh, play. Uh, you know, uh, I, yeah, the, the announcers, uh, Mark Schlereth and Dick Stockton, he even uh, gave a shout out to Peanut Tillman, who was there in attendance for the game. Um, and, and this isn't the first time Sherrick McManus has done that. I believe this is his second time already this season he's punched the ball out. Um, I think he did a couple times in the preseason as well. So 
good to see Sherrick McManus make some plays. Again, Mukamara was able to recover that. But, again, that was really the, the only bright spot on the defense side of the ball. Early in the game, Akeem Hicks was able to track down Josh Jacobs for a tackle for loss. Um, unfortunately, very soon after that, Akeem Hicks was uh, lost for the game with a um, elbow injury. looked like a dislocated elbow. Um, not the prettiest of images uh, there, but uh, so that 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 was a big loss for this defense. Um, the Oakland Raiders, they, as you said last week, they did everything they could to not hear Khalil Mack's name, and uh, they did a pretty good job doing that. Khalil Mack, three tackles. He did uh, have a fumble recovery, but uh, zero sacks, as uh, as you predicted. I got the. I, I got the check in the mail already, DJ, uh, the, the $5 check uh, you, on that bet. <laughs> you just know, Gruden in that meeting room, like, do not, under any circumstance, let him sack. Because he had one, he just threw it down. Yeah, you know, and I thought that was intentional grounding, but. Hey, under any circumstance, don't let him. T- well, this is a teletype. You got Jacobs with 26 carries. You had Washington with six. You got Richardson with two. You got Harris one. Ingo had one. Now, Carr had three, but I don't know if them were rushers just run. Man, it's almost 40. What I think that's all. might be 40 of them things. 32, four, seven. Now, a little under four. I'm like 39 carries. Listen, that's a lot of running. And the reason that they – I mean, they've been doing it all year. I think they jumped off, jumped out on Kansas City kind of the same way, like 10 nothing. Because they control the line of scrimmage and card. I mean, just 25 for 32, 229. No touchdown, no interceptions. Just don't get a ball away. Do your job. Um, be safe because he can make every throw. But when you're running back 26 for 123, 4.7 a carry. You know what that means? That's a first down. Every three? Like first down. Uh, second and what? Five? Or six and a half? And then, oh, listen. That's third and manners rule. Now when I do the play action, man, he was sitting back there looking around like there's nobody close because when they start when they start gouging you like that, you can't get up the field anymore because coach like, hey man, you gotta control your gap. Hey, what you doing out of your gap? I've been doing that all year. Well, guess what? He's running down our throat. Ah, I got a so throat, no car drops, man. Come on now. They're coming. He's coming. Ah, 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 ah. Now, I, I thought they would do better just because last week you go against the lead, like the leading rusher, and, and he got back on track this week. But you go against the leading rusher, and it's like, but listen, they are, they, this offensive line was, and I don't they know. Were how big they, 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 they were stout. They were great. They looked solid. They looked big. And they was leaning that weight on you, and that was just it. He was running through the hole hard as he possibly could. I mean, it, and. Yeah, that, that's. I think sometimes it's just a tough matchup. Like when you're a little more, because the guys we got, uh, they're bigger. But even like Khalil Mack, is, compared to these cats they had, they were massive. And then it's it, man, it's a little bit hard. Sometimes it's just not your matchup, man. Sometimes you know, sometimes you beat Mike Tyson, and most of the time you get knocked out by. So it's what it is, man. Yeah, we'll see how they bounce back. And you know, looking looking at this receiver receiver corps that this Raiders team had entering this game. I mean, they were down. They're two top receivers in Tyrell Williams and J.J. Nelson. Um, Tyrell Williams, a big body wide receiver that, that has really nice speed for being a, a 6'5 wide receiver. I believe as Pro Day uh, ran a 4'3'40 um, a few years back. And then uh, J.J. Nelson, the former Cardinals wide receiver, True speedster, a little on the smaller side, but uh, could take the top off the defense. You know, kind of in the conversation with a uh, uh, Tyreek Hill and uh, Tariq Cohen, and, and you know, when talking about some of the faster guys in the league, they're without those two guys, and uh, we're still able to make it work. Uh, their tight end, rookie tight end Foster Morrow, uh, led the team in receiving. Trevor Davis, former Packer, coming in right away, making an impact on that team, uh, and then Darren Waller, four receptions, thirty-nine yards uh, through three games. Uh, through four games, excuse me, he actually uh, had uh, tied with Antonio Gates, I believe it was, for uh, most receptions in the uh, to start the season in uh, four games. Uh, he has another four receptions, and um, again, I mean, all three phases, you know, offense, defense, we already touched on, and even special teams towards the end really hurt the Chicago Bears as uh, reserve linebacker Kevin Pierre Lewis. Um, gets called for a, a penalty. He runs into the punter as uh, 
Uh, you know, time was ticking late in the fourth quarter. Raiders punt the football, and uh, he goes and, and tries to get the block. Uh, claims that he was uh, pushed into the punter. He, I don't know if he really had to go force himself or, or try to get after the punter. I think that was kind of a guy that was trying to make a play at the wrong time where it really wasn't needed, where if he just let the punt get off, uh, there's a good chance that the Bears were going to uh, uh, run the time down and uh, win the football game. Instead, they get flagged, and uh, the Raiders were able to uh, uh, live for another play, and they that was, uh, of course, the drive that lasted uh, the, the entire 97 yards uh, for the score. Um, DJ, I know you said you are going to review the tape and look more into the game. Did you see that? Uh, penalty. I did. So I think I see. I I, I seen a little. I seen him run into him. I'm fine with it just because I know he's playing hard. I just whenever people make mistakes like that, passing the fans, holding, like I know you just playing hard. I know you're not trying to like lose the game. You know, for the most part, unless we check your text messages and it says that you want Ukraine. To, never mind. Whatever. All right, that's a whole nother story. But <laughs> it's, it, I think it's fine now. They ran a fake punt, correct? I thought they kicked because it was they it did. Was like and, I think it was fourth and seven or something, a fourth and six. You know what? I think I think running right. to the kicker. You're you're exactly it's right. Fourth down again, correct? Yeah, and that that was when they ran the fake the the fake uh, punt. Now I didn't watch the film, but to me, I'm assuming that if it's fourth and one, now you're thinking more like they may fake it. Now you probably need to get your defense back on the field. Now, I think, was it on their side of the field, correct? Yes. Yes, it was. Yes. Now, it's a little more like, but thinking about it, like, like I got to really take advantage of, you know, what it is. Think about, like, hey, you have to put your defense back on the field because when you put your defense on the field, it deters them from doing what? Running it. Because when it's a, re a regular punt team, guys in that situation, you got linebackers, you got corners and DB, whoever – because you just got guys who can run, hold people up, hold their blocks for a long time. It's not meant for stopping A-gap runs. You know what I mean? So, and I wasn't there, but you probably could see the momentum of, hey, man, you know what? You 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 got to you gotta take advantage of this situation. And you got to, and they did. And I think for us, you just got to make sure. And I, I'm not sure if we did or not, but I couldn't imagine a punt team getting – you know what I mean? Penetrating against our starting defense because it's not like a offensive lineman. It's, it's a punt team. It's linebackers and DBs like both sides of the ball, special team type guys. So, um, well, they took advantage of it. He ran into them. But, but still, when you're a really good defense, man, you're still on their side. I mean, you're, their side, they still got to go a long way. At that point, you expect, you expect that defense to make the play. You know what I mean? So, we didn't, and and that's going. I mean, that'll hurt you right there because it's just like even if the offense, the offense got us back to where we we can win the game. All right, so now it's our turn. You know what? We struggled. This is the mark of a true good defense. What you got to do? We got to make a play. Didn't make it. So they have to live with that. They'll adjust to it. I think it's good. I think it makes the defense better because you don't get to brag all week again. You don't get to brag for the ball week. Now you get to say, hey man, now people get to doubt you a little bit. And I think that makes you a little bit more hungry, though. So, DJ, following this game, following this loss, uh, the, the, I mean, it kind of took the, the 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 city was caught off guard with this one, man. I mean, you know, it was it, it had the whole Khalil Mack revenge game hype to it. It had the whole hey, the Bears are a hundred percent the better team in this matchup. Um, just about everybody predicted the Bears to, to win this game, and they thought they they would win it in um, decisive manner. But uh, that was not the case, and uh, the Raiders pulled the upset. And the uh, the Bears fan base hadn't been this upset, minus the playoff game last year. They hadn't been this upset dating back to the John Fox days. Um, may, maybe even a little bit before that, because there was really no expectation with those John Fox teams. Um, so for this loss to, to happen when it did, how it did in the fashion in which it did, um, it, it really, uh, it, it really stunned the bears fan base. Is there a reason to panic 
right now, five weeks into the season, if you're a fan um, of the Chicago Bears? I will say no, but I'm going to say yeah. Um, because last year isn't this year. We, we, we tape our expectations off of last year's team. Last year's team did good. Uh, you made it to the playoffs. Feel the goal away from going to the next round. That was last year's team. This is not an upset because if it was last year's Raiders team, it would have been an upset. This year's Raiders team is playing really good. They beat the same team that you beat. You know what I mean? Like they've they played really well. They in the same boat that you play in their offense. To me, they have the better quarterback and to be honest, the better offensive line and true enough, the better running back. No, we had the better defense, but they didn't care about that because they took it, they took it to us. Um the Raiders are a good team. Uh, I will be paying because what could you read off the schedule for me? What you got the schedule there? Yep. So what who do we have left? It's tough, man. It, it's yeah. it's tough. That's yeah. why this that's why this win was, you know, it I'm not gonna say it was must win, but it, it was pretty close. So oh, there's, yeah. There's, oh, cause, yeah, we are we what are we three and two, correct? We're three and two, got the uh, bye week. All then, right. then you host the New Orleans Saints. That's a toss up. So you can go win or loss on that. That's a toss up. Okay, go and keep going. You host the Los Angeles Chargers. I would say that's a win, but the Chargers are always difficult. That's a, I mean, it's still a, it, that's another toss up. It just, mm-hmm. if you got Phillip Rivers, and I think with the defensive line, we should beat up on them, but it's just the Chargers. They're, they're good. They're an okay team. But you know what? Yeah, I would. That's that's a win. I would say that was a win. A lot of people that, had that has that has to be a win. It has to be. A lot of people had the Chargers uh, as an AFC representative in the Super Bowl. They've not looked that sharp to start the year, uh, losing to the Denver Broncos yesterday. Um, after that, you got you're on the road at Philadelphia. Oh, okay, that, that's always going to be tough. That's a toss up. Then you go back home and host the Detroit Lions. All right, that's going to be – we've seen that. That's going to be it's, – it's Detroit, so that's going to be a tough one. But you have to – you have to beat Detroit twice. You just can't – because you can you can split with one team, but you can't split with two in your own. You know what I mean? You can't split with two in your own. Because you have to beat Detroit, and then you have to beat the, the Vikings again. And then you have to obviously split with the, with the uh, Green Bay, though. Yeah, then, and and then you're on the road. You gotta travel out west to play the Los Angeles Rams. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and listen, that's tough because the teams that I mean, the teams that like you got, you know, New Orleans and Chargers and the Rams, and then pretty much the rest is gonna be division foes where you gotta go to Green Bay and what is it? Go to Minnesota, right? Uh, so after the Rams, you got. Uh, at home against the Giants, then at Detroit, at Dallas, at Green Bay. Uh, no, I'm sorry. That da- that Cowboys game is actually at home. And then it's at Green Bay, at home against Kansas City, and then you uh, finish the regular season at Minnesota. Yeah, I mean, I I don't I know I'll never think it's time to pick because we've seen teams come from one to five and go all the way and get on the streak. We just got to get, like, a little momentum going. But the, the schedule itself, when you lose against the Raiders, when you think you expect to win because you're thinking about last year, yeah, that's going to be a t- – now, if we lose against New Orleans, I, which really it ain't New Orleans. If it's the Chargers, there's no way. That's the one. You can't. You cannot. That's my panic right there. Because even if you lose to New Orleans, because I mean, I just expect, I just expect, it's just, it's hard. It's a hard game. But the Chargers, no, nah. no, nah, you can't. No, no, no. The Chargers, no, no. That's the one for me. If you lose to the Chargers, you can hang it up. You know, you you talk about New Orleans, how, and that is going to be a tough game. It is. Uh, but you said, hey, you know what? Something that's in the Bears' favor is that it's a home game, and obviously, any home game is always going to be in the home game's favor. But I remember, 
I don't know which year it was, maybe 2010, but the Bears played at New Orleans and got crushed, man. It was a, it was an ugly, ugly game. It, it was that the toughest uh, place you were able, you played at on the road? Um, no, they were a good team. Um, had a lot of good receivers, speedy receivers, and Drew Brees was on the money. It seemed like all the time. They had Jimmy Graham. They had Sproles. I mean, they had. They were the old Saints. They were, and then they were paying people to get hurt. Um, no, I don't know. They were. They probably were the loudest. I think St. Louis was really loud. We played. I mean, I said Seattle, and it was like before they were even like the the good Seattle. I right. Think. Um, but it was ex- it was it was interesting down there because they were always just really really loud and they. And they fed, it was almost kind of like a college basketball game where you're thinking, like, man, they hit one three, and then they start hitting two. Like, they really feed off, you know what I mean, of the crowd. So it was, you know what I mean, it was kind of, you know what I mean, with interest. I think the toughest place to play was always at home because you had an expectation of, like, get it done. Because if you do not, the boo will reign supreme at halftime. Don't, don't tell Eddie Jackson that. But, huh? Don't tell Eddie Jackson that. Oh, it is what it is. You know what I mean? So I, I thought it'd be tough. Thought it was tough playing home because it's just your, it's just your play to grab. You don't want nobody coming to your crib and, you know what I mean, beat you. So um, I just took pride in, man, being the home team. And it was just like you just, just gotta listen. You gotta get it because if you don't get it down on the road, it's just like it's their fans. You know what I mean? But in front of your own, it's just like, boo, <laughs> ah, crap. All right, you right. That's my fault. So. All right, so Bears lose this one against the Oakland Raiders. Uh, it'll be the last time the Bears play the Oakland Raiders as next year they move to Las Vegas. Um, and, again, that was the first, uh, very first football game, American football game, played in the Tottenham uh, Hotspurs, I believe they're called, uh, stadium. It was a billion-dollar stadium, over a billion-dollar uh, stadium and uh, again it was incredible from what I've seen on TV and pictures and all that great stuff but anyways Bears did not get the job done 24 to 21 very disappointing outcome uh, a roller coaster of a game DJ as I told you before the show uh, started it, it had uh, you know it had flashbacks of that uh, Arizona Cardinals game from back in 2006 the last Bears team to uh, make it to a Super Bowl you know the Bears are who we thought they were. Uh, the the Dennis Green oh, press conference. Um, oh, crown of all right. Unfor- crown. Unfortunately, different outcome as the uh, the Raiders were able to hold on and uh, score uh, in in late of, late in the fourth quarter to win the game twenty four twenty one. Um, but on to the next one. They got the bye week, so uh, going to be focusing on this loss for another uh, thirteen days until they play the New Orleans Saints at home. Which uh, hey, I, I hope I hope they're. Back. What's that? The Trubisky on his way back. Oh, hey, no. he made the trip in London. They they didn't rule him out until late in the week, and uh, th- there is some belief that he could be ready for that New Orleans game. We'll see. Um, I mean, not really sure if. if I mean, I, it sucks that <laughs> you get your starting quarterback, and you're still not sure if that's going to be much of an improvement. Uh, to what we've seen from Chase Daniel lately, but uh, anyways, I mean, we'll, we'll we'll see again. We got 13 days to dwell on this loss. All you can do is try. So. Hey, that's it. That's it. And uh, of course, live in the shadow of Patrick Mahomes and Deshaun Watson, who threw uh, who who put up a 50 burger against the Atlanta Falcons yesterday. Um, but what can you do, <laughs> DJ? That's gonna wrap it up for tonight, man. Yeah, yeah, not not good. That Super Bowl loss is really like, like I don't know. I've never seen a hangover this long. But you know what? That's that's easy to know that that is ages. I don't know what that is. Yeah, you <laughs> know, maybe maybe next week we'll uh, we'll focus a little bit more around the league as the Bears are now on their bye. Um, but yeah, that's gonna do it for tonight's show. Bears fall to the Oakland Raiders, twenty four twenty one. Raiders looked uh, much better. They they were the dominant team in all three phases, and it uh, showed in the outcome. 
with the victory and uh, with the loss uh, on the Bears' side. So um, Bears now go into their bye week and will uh, host the New Orleans Saints 13 days from today. And uh, uh, again, Bears 3-2, and two, Raiders 3-2 and two as well. Um, for Chris, uh, for DJ Moore, I'm Chris Shanafell. As always, thanks everybody for tuning in. Of course, if you missed this show in its entirety, you could always check it out on YouTube, uh, also on all uh, podcast uh, platforms as well, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, uh, and really anywhere you can find uh, uh, tune in radio app as well. I mean, anywhere you can find uh, podcasts, uh, go ahead and search Chris and DJ Show. Uh, again, he's former Bears Nickelback DJ Moore. I'm Chris Schanfeld. Thanks for tuning in, everybody.